Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Has it really been almost a month since we've done a regular video together? I think it has. Man, time has flown, but I got the camera with me today. Gonna be doing some fishing today. We're gonna turn some direction here to get out of the sun on that camera, but my plan this afternoon is, I'm gonna spend the bulk of my time out here doing some catfishing. I've got some cut bait, I got me some skipjack yesterday. But in addition to that, I wanna get some live baits. And so I've got my ultralight rod with me and I'm gonna get over here on the shoreline and just kind of work these down trees and the brush down through here. And you know, when you're using an ultralight rod and some gulp minnows, you're gonna get a lot of action and usually a variety of species. And so we could find some bluegill, we could find some bass, maybe some yellow bass, maybe some crappie. And whatever I get that's of adequate size, I'm gonna put here in my bucket to use as I do some catfishing later. So anyway, it's been a long time since we've done this, y'all. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm out of practice, I'm out of sorts. Hopefully I can still remember how to catch a fish on video. That's kind of the most important thing when you're making a fishing video, right? But nevertheless, we're gonna have some fun out here this evening. So come with me, help me catch a fish here. I'm gonna stick the camera back in the chest and we're gonna get over here and make some casts. Right here, for those of you new to my channel or Maybe if you've only watched my catfish videos, you've never seen me ultralight fish. Here is my favorite bait. This is a one inch gulp minnow on a 164th ounce jig head with a number eight hook. That gulp minnow is in the smelt color. I throw it on two pound test line with my ultralight rod. That's a St. Croix panfish series rod. It's six foot long. Some people like shorter rods, some people like longer. This six foot's a nice happy medium for me. But what I do with this bait is I get on these, I basically beat the banks with it. That's how I spend the bulk of my time fishing this bait. I throw at visible cover, visible objects. And you make enough cast along the shoreline here, along these trees, you're gonna get bit. It's inevitable, it's a matter of time. There's all kinds, of, right here, boy, first cast. Right here, man. Some say it's good luck, some say it's bad luck. I say they ain't never a bad time to catch a fish and buddy, we off to a good start. Is it possible the fish missed me? Is that possible? Well, so what do you think, Bluegill? Tell these people watching at home, I probably got five people that still remember me. Did you miss me, fish? He says, hell no, he didn't miss me. He said, that's a, since I ain't been filming videos, that's the only peace and quiet he's had. Let's throw over there and see if we can catch some of his friends. I got, got hit again, buddy. Man, they're hitting it. They must be up close to the surface because they're hitting it instantly. Oh, man. Well, if it's going to be like this, y'all, I'll take it. Here is another nice-sized gill, man. Nice bluegill right there. Nice. Go in that bucket, bluegill. We're gonna we're gonna maybe put you to use. I guess y'all, I guess I'll just leave that camera going here. We'll do a little raw and uncut video. Some of you's like that. Here's another one. Three for three, man. I'm on a streak. We're going streaking. And I ain't talking about running naked through the courtyard either, man. We we on a fish catching streak here. I'll just leave that camera rolling here for 30 minutes, an hour, however long I do this. It's, it's a, oh, oh, boy, he's a, he's a slippery little thing. Calm it, boy, he wants every second of camera time he can get. This fish that he's trying out for the dance team or something, he's got moves. But uh, I don't know what time it is. It's after four. My plan is to be catfishing by about. 5.30 or so, I'd like to I'd like to be set up, you know, an hour or so before dark. And it's getting dark around seven-ish these days here. We're, I don't know what today is, October 20 something, 28th, 29th, something like that. It's a Friday when I'm filming this. I don't know what the date is. But nevertheless, it's getting, it's getting dark. Boy, I missed the bucket. The grand prize game bozo show. I've failed. It's getting dark earlier and earlier. 
which makes me sad. Summer's leaving us. But I want to be set up to do some catfishing about an hour before sunset, and I'm going to fish for two or three hours after sunset and just see what happens. I, I'm on Melton Hill Reservoir tonight. Here's another. Man, I'm catching a fish every single cast off this tree. My drag's messed up there. It ain't moved at all. I'll tell you what, Bluegill, I think you're going to be Every one of these bluegills been a good size to keep. You're going to be the last one to keep, I think. And if I catch some yellow bass or some crappie, we'll definitely keep those. But I'm going to sit here and keep catching these bluegill for a minute. But I was trying to say before these fish keep interrupting me that I'm on Melton Hill Reservoir tonight. Now, I love fishing over here for just about every... Well, this has come up out of the water. Oh, he spit it to you. He broke my streak. The streak got broken, y'all. I don't even know what we was up to. But anyway, I love fishing over here for everything except catfish. Catfishing here is tough. And here comes another one. There are catfish in here, blues, flatheads, and channels. Quite a few channel cats in here. But I'll tell you something, the, the blues are tough to catch in here. You get some, when you do get them, they're usually really big, but you don't get many. And you get a lot of skunk trips. Oh, I was gonna show that fish off and he said, heck with you. So I'm gonna try for some cats tonight. You may or may not see a video from it if I, get a big fish i'll show it and if i don't catch anything well i gave it to college try oh that's another good size gill right here look at that see this right here's why i love coming over here man because when you take an ultralight rod out here on melton hill this thing is stock full of fish that don't want to be on camera apparently Y'all know I love me some ultralight fishing. My regular viewers know it. We'll just make this, with the way the fish are biting here, hell, we'll just make this a raw and uncut video. I'll leave the camera going, show you the good, show you the bad, everything in between. Assuming that the GoPro don't lock up or overheat, that's always, that's the biggest challenge on them raw and uncut videos. It ain't the fish. It's the, it's the technical stuff. One of the things during my hi YouTube hiatus here over the last month, that's another thick gill, man. Look at that thing, man. He's got some girth to him. That's what she said. One of the things that I've done in my little YouTube hiatus is I did try out a new camera. I got that new DJI Action 3 camera because uh, according to their advertisements, it, it was the anti-GoPro. It, it supposedly doesn't overheat. The battery life is supposedly better. Um, basically everything I hate about GoPro, this new DJI camera was supposed to fix. Well, I get the thing, super excited about it. I take it out, I'm using it, and I, I filmed a video with it. And I love the mount that it come with. They've got this like magnetic clip base or whatever. It was awesome. The battery life was so much better than GoPro. It never overheated on me. The screen didn't lock up like the GoPro does. So I had a good day fishing with it, but I get home and I go to edit the video and I'm looking at the footage and I'm like, man, this footage looks like crap. It was all blurry and stuff. It was like it was out of focus. And I do a little researching on it and come to find out it ain't just me. Uh, apparently a lot of people with that camera had that problem. And so I, I scrapped the video. I was like, well, hell, I ain't gonna post this because it looks terrible. You know, it just didn't look right. And so I send it back. They, they, thankfully, you know, they 
doing returns and stuff for people that's having this problem. So I got it sent back and got a refund. And, and so, you know, now it's kind of a situation. It's like, I really liked the camera, except for the fact that it, it didn't work right, <laughs> that the video sucked. So it's like, do I get another one and take the risk of getting yet another? Because it seems to be a mass problem. I don't know what percentage of cameras they're having this issue with, but it's a lot of people online complaining about it. So it's not an isolated thing. So I'm like, do I get another one now and hope for the best? Or do I give it a few months and let them get the kinks worked out and then get it? I really don't want to get that GoPro 11 because from what I can see, it's got the same problems as the GoPro 10 and nine and eight and seven all the way down to the first one with the same issues they refuse to fix with the overheating and the it's not even the over here's another fish finally we were in a little drought there for a minute i can deal with the overheating better than i can deal with the screen locking up and losing footage that happens all the time at least once a trip sometimes sometimes every other trip but it happens frequently and that's so frustrating when it does sometimes you're able to recover the footage sometimes you're not and so reliability if you're going to do youtube with any kind of regularity you need you need reliable working gear and so yeah here fish you lucky fish that hook didn't want to let you go so this GoPro, it's been a, I switched from Sony to GoPro last year and it has been a love-hate relationship. The camera quality, the video quality is amazing on GoPro. Definitely the best of the action cameras, but the reliability leaves so much to be desired. So anyway, that's one of them things that I've been tinkering with while I've been on my hiatus is trying to get some camera stuff straightened out i'll probably end up getting that dji camera once they get the bugs straightened out i may take advantage of their i ordered the first one off dji's website i may i may order off amazon because they got a good return thing too and hope for the best maybe i'll get lucky and get one that that's in focus But, uh, yeah, y'all, I've been taking a little me time, and it has been enjoyable. I've got so many little projects done around the house. You know, those things that y'all know how it is. You're working, you got stuff to do, and something needs to be done, and you just kind of put it off, and you put it off. And before you know it, you got a list of 20 things that's, just little honeydew things that needs to get done. And so I've been knocking those out. And it's been uh, it's been good to get some of that stuff off the, the do list, especially when I still got warm weather to do. It's starting to cool down here in East Tennessee. Our water temps, it's 61 degrees surface temps right here where I'm at right now. But the outdoor temperatures, at least the afternoons, have still been pretty warm for the most part. And so these outdoor tasks that I've been doing around the house, it's, you know, if I put them off to winter, I'm freezing cold. And at least right now I can get it done and not be miserable doing it. Been watching a lot of football. My Vols beat Alabama, finally. I wish I had went to the game. I I thought about it, ultimately decided not to. It'll be one of them in hindsight decisions that I, I wish I had been there live for it. But finally, after all these years, I can tell you Alabama people that watch my channel, I can tell you all to suck it because we're better than you. Finally, the old saying blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while it was our year after 16 years it's our year dadgummit so we'll see what happens the rest of the season but they they looking good this is the best team we've had in a long time pretty pumped up about it i guess these fish ain't pumped up anymore oh well 
Won't hit me then. We were getting them ever cast there for a hot minute and now things cooled off on us. Here's one. This one here, he must have heard I was about to move on and thought he better take his opportunity while he still got it. You never know who's watching a video, man. There could be somebody that sees this fish and says, I'm gonna make this fish a star. This could be your big break fish. Everybody just needs a chance at that big break in life and this could be yours. For your sake, I hope it is. I'm gonna let you go. You got a business card. How are they gonna reach you? He's out, he, he's bluegill, man. He catches a break, but then can't catch a break because he ain't got email. He said, he said somebody wants to get a hold of him, they'll have to send him a letter. And bad news for him around here, post office don't run every day. Well, they don't at my house anyway. I told that story on a little vlog video, but I got a problem postal service delivering my mail. I'm wrapped up in a tree right now. They keep delivering my mail to neighbors' houses and my neighbor's mail to my house. And I had a package the other day that, that says it was delivered, but I never got. And I'll never see again. And I've been pretty ticked off about it. So I hope that whoever delivers the mail out here to these bluegill, I hope they're more reliable than what I got around my house. Are they bluegill? Will you tell me? He, he can't say anything. He's speechless. Fish is either speechless or having a stroke. I don't know. I ain't going to call 911 for him. Got the line all twisted up there. Now, boy, now I about knocked my gulp off. How many fish is that on this one gulp? I feel like we've got our money's worth out of this one. It's about, I'd flipped it upside down a few minutes ago. Let's just switch that out here. I'm gonna get me another one here out of my pickup. Somebody asked a comment the other day. Random comments have popped up. Even though I ain't been posting videos, people comment on the old stuff. And somebody had asked how I store my gulp minnows. And I thought, well, that's a pretty dumb question if they've actually watched my ultralight videos because I think I've shown that pickup in about every one of them. But if that person happens to watch this video or somebody else out there is wondering, I put them in a urine specimen cup because the urine specimen cup don't leak. I've got that thing back on there. Again, that's a 164th ounce size with a number eight hook. And I get them jig heads on eBay. Don't ask me for a link because I don't order them very often. I normally get them in bulk. I'll buy 500 or 1,000 at a time and I just buy them from whoever's selling the cheapest at the time. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. You know, whatever the best deal I can get is what I go with. It's a shad dart head if you're, well there's a fish. I could see, I didn't feel him but I saw my line tighten up and shoot off. But if you go on eBay and you type in like 164th ounce shad dart head you'll see the options come up. Most of them will let you pick your hook size. I like that number eight hook for these one inch size minnows. It's a good size. This is a big bluegill right here, man. Look at this thing right here. My goodness, fish. You have got some size to you. Be still a second, would you? I wanna show you off. Look at the colors on it too. Look at that purple. These fish are starting to get some of their winter colors here, their cooler water colors. You are a beautiful fish. He says, thank you. Thank you very much. He says, I'm a, I'm a gentleman. But I mean, hell, I ain't moved here, y'all. The wind's kind of blowing down through here today. Not real hard, not enough to be a nuisance, but I'm in my, I'm in my Hobie kayak with the motor because I'm gonna be catfishing. So I've just hit spot lock on this thing and I'm sitting here on this one tree. Hell, we ain't had to move. It's been all bluegill thus far. Ain't been no crappie or yellow bass. I'd really like to get me a yellow bass or two. 
for tonight, but them skipjack will probably be what gets it done for me if I catch a catfish, which again is a big if. You all may not end up seeing a video from this trip because, or from the, from the catfishing portion anyway, because if I fish out here for catfish 10 times, I'm probably gonna get skunked five or six. I'll probably get channel catted one or two. And, you know, maybe get, maybe have two or three out of 10 trips that are just big blue cat or big flathead trips. The population here just, it's just not, there's not a lot of blues in here, but again, the ones that are, are pretty much unpressured and get big. And so when you do get bit, you're not gonna have, here's a fish, you ain't gonna come out here and catch catfish like you do these bluegill where it's one on every cast. That just ain't, it ain't you ain't gonna have a 30 catfish day. But you might get one or two fish that are golly whopper size. And that's what I'm hoping to get tonight. And this fish right here says he's gonna act like a golly whopper bluegill, man. Oh, bluegill. Let me take a look. This in here, folks, he's, he's got it kind of deep. Let me, let me see if I can find my pliers here, my aerator. I might need that in a minute. Where is my pliers at? I cleaned out this thing the other day, and now I still can't find nothing. What am I doing with them things? Oh, you know what? Hang on, Bluegill. Bear with me, folks. Hell, we, we raw and uncut here. You never know what's gonna happen. These things are still in my bag. These, these pliers are still in my backpack back here. There they are. All right. Let me see if I can do some surgery on this fish. If not here, he's gonna be used for cut bait tonight. If we've got him too deep. That happens, unfortunately. All right, I got the jig out. I don't know, he ain't bleeding. You may have got, you may be the luckiest bluegill alive. Is he button? I thought he was deep enough that he was going to be down in the gills a little bit, but oh heck. I guess when I took that jig out, I Goodness gracious, throw that one on the blooper reels, folks. Uh, I took that jig out, I broke my line. Well, we raw and uncut here, so we're just gonna roll with it. I guess I'll be doing a knot tying demonstration on video. These small jig heads, if, if you ain't got good eyesight, you best get you some readers or some some kind of bifocals, trifocals, something or another. I'm about that age here. I'm, I'm having trouble seeing to thread that line. It's two pound line, so thin. And that hook eye is so thin. Hard to, hard to do it. I got it in there. All right. I just used to look a little, I don't know what you call it, clinch knot, trilene knot, something like that. Everybody's got their own favorite knot, personally. I think the only knot that matters is the one that holds. If you like it and got confidence in it, roll with it. I've been using this knot for years and, well, for those, here's another fish. For those of you that have watched my ultralight videos and some of you have watched every single one of them, you've seen me catch literally thousands of fish on video with this knot so it works and it catches fish these fish here when you throw in this gulp on these branches and brush and stuff most of the fish hit the bait on the fall some people a lot of the saltwater guys 
are big on tying a loop knot. And their reasoning for that most of the time is that it gives the jig a little bit more action. And it probably does when you're actively working the jig. But like I was saying, when I'm throwing this gulp here, most of the fish that I catch, most of the action I get, even from them leaves right there, is when the jig's falling, when it's just sinking down through the water column, that's when you get bit. And so you don't, a loop knot, any knot you have, it's not gonna give it any more action on the fall. And so it really doesn't matter, in my opinion, what knot you use, as long as it's a knot that's strong that ain't gonna break on you. That's another hard fighting fish right here, man. These fish, man, y'all know I love me some ultralight fishing and when I'm getting them like this, holy cow, look at this bluegill, man. They are feeding up, getting ready for winter, buddy. And I hope the catfish are doing the same this evening. Give me that hook back now. There you go. Look at this one. Look at that purple on there. It goes from like an orangish pink up here to purple. You're another pretty one. Thick too, man. You're lucky I didn't catch you first thing. Some of your friends there in that bucket. At least one of them is going to get a hook through his back tonight. May be the only one. The others I'll just let go when I'm done this evening. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep making some cast here on this. this. All these leaves, again, the wind is blowing down through here and you know, wind to fall, beautiful colors on the trees. It's beautiful out here right now, but all these leaves on the water when you when you got such a light jig head. Make a cast over here, maybe. I ain't got as many leaves. But your line's sinking down with that light jig head, and it gets caught on a leaf, and it just stops. It just sits there. The leaves can make it a little difficult. Here's a fish, though, and, buddy, he's a pulling. Oh, he's got me in a branch. I actually think the fish is gone. The fish is gone, and I'm in a branch. Crap. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's come off spot lock and see if we can get this one back. Y'all just watch me. If we're doing this raw and uncut, there's only so many times you can tie a knot and get people to, to watch you on video. I'd like to get this thing back, especially since I just retied a couple minutes ago. We may spook some fish over here, but that'd be all right. If there's this many on one tree here, there's probably, there we go, we got it back. There's probably a lot more fish on these other trees too. This ain't a, this ain't an isolated event here. You know, you may hit 10, 15 more trees down through here and nothing be on them, but then you'll come to another tree and it'll be just like this where they'll just, for whatever reason, be stacked up. I just happened to get lucky. I, I'm fishing right across the channel from where I'm going to be doing some catfishing tonight. I just thought I'd come over here and try to get me some live baits and uh, well, what do you know, <laughs> first tree I pull up on is stacked, so I'll take it. I'll take some good fortune anytime I can get it. Here's a fish too. Let me just, let me just spot lock again. Here comes a boat, 100 miles an hour down the river. Bluegill, you lucky I come along as I'm moving slow enough to actually catch you. That fellow there in the boat going 100 miles an hour, he couldn't make a cast and catch nothing right now. I've caught fish trolling up to four miles an hour. That's about as fast as I go in this kayak, you know, four, four and a half. 
but I can't say that I've ever caught one at 70 miles an hour. He's going, he's run a long ways today from the ramp too. I guarantee he passed up a few thousand fish getting where he was going. Yeah, I gotta replace this reel, y'all. I've been talking about it for months. My regular audience is sick of hearing me talk about it, but my drag either sticks or it's super loose. Oh, oh, that bluegill don't care. He don't care about my reel problems. I don't know what kind I'm gonna get. I need to reach out to Randy Go, Trout Magnet Man, and see what he would recommend. He's all time reviewing ultralight gear. If y'all ain't, if y'all into ultralight fishing, especially like JDM ultralight fishing, because that's that's the high end ultralight gear. Randy on Trout Magnet Man YouTube channel, he is always getting new rods and, and new reels and stuff to try out. I love ultralight fishing. I love catching fish on the ultralight. But Randy, I mean, he's like next level, man. He's he's super into the gear and and he's like a true ultralight fisherman. And so he's a he's an expert in the field. So I got to reach out to him at some point and see what he would recommend for me. I'd like to keep it. Yeah, I'd like to keep it around $100 or so. I might go a little more than that. Get me a good reel. This one here has lasted a long time, and it's just a cheap $30 job from Walmart, a little Abu Garcia reel. But it's done a good job for me. That bluegill fell victim to it. I tried out a fluger reel a few years ago and didn't really like it i had a lot of line twist with it so i'll probably get another abu garcia or a, a daiwa i really like daiwa reels too i don't know what model i'll get but i'm gonna have to do it soon because this thing here's about had it definitely before the new year before the before the spring crappie season rolls around because again, spring's about the only time I can catch a crappie consistently. I'm a terrible crappie fisherman. I got a little better with it this year with the live scope. But as you can see, I've taken the live scope off the kayak. I'd, I'd had to take my kayak off the trailer recently and do some repairs on it. I plastic welded the hole. And so I kind of cleaned out the kayak and took some stuff off. The live scope was one of the things that I took off. I bought that live scope last year around, I got it on Black Friday. And I wanted to use it for catfishing. I had some stuff I wanted to try with it and it was kind of a fail for the catfishing. I, I you know, it's a neat novelty thing to see fish come up and, and eat my catfish baits, but it don't really help me catch any more catfish. And so the main thing that I had found the live scope to be useful for was ultralight fishing, being able to scan these trees and see which ones hold fish and which ones don't. You can kind of eliminate water a little quickly, a little bit more quickly with the live scope than just making casts, you know. So it's very helpful for that. But what I've kind of found is, um, you know, after the newness and the novelty kind of wore off with me with the live scope, it's kind of one of them things that I just wasn't using anymore. Oftentimes when I go ultralight fishing, I don't even really like ultralight fishing in this kayak as much. I typically prefer my other kayak, my pedal kayak, that doesn't have any electronics or anything. You know, it's just kind of bare bones minimum and just going out with a rod and some jig heads and some gulp and just catching what I catch, you know, just super simple, minimalistic setup. And so, I don't know, uh, you know, again, the live scope novelty for me, it's a great tool in certain applications, but I don't know if I'm gonna end up keeping it or not. This fish said, this fish that he wished I'd been looking at a live scope screen instead of casting. 
because I might not have put a hook in his jaw. What do you think about that fish? You think about these guys got the live scopes that spends more time looking at a screen than casting. I know that's how it is when I'm when I'm using a live scope. It was really helpful though, you know, going up under these, looking up under these docks and on these trees and stuff and seeing which, which ones are loaded with fish and which ones aren't. Now, you know, it, when you just cast them down through here, like I said, I've been lucky here on, on these trees, they're just stacked with fish. But oftentimes you'll, you'll cover 10, 15 trees, nothing, you know, no, no, no concentration, but you'll get a bite here. You'll catch a fish here, you know, kind of sporadically. When I'm using that live scope, what I found is those kind of trees that maybe got one or two fish, I just pass them up, you know, I'm just, I'm just going right past them. And so I, I end up not catching those fish that I would have if I wasn't using live scope. But I get on the school of fish quicker with the live scope. So I end up catching more fish by the end of the day but I, I pass up a lot of fish, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining it how I mean. Again, I'm out of practice on this YouTube crap, man. I gotta, I gotta get it together here. We gotta, we gotta get things going again here. I got that trip down to Texas here, two weeks. Probably film while I'm there, you know, so I gotta get my, I gotta get my practice reps in here so I'll be good to go come game time. How long have we been live now? I hope my camera's still going. Yeah, it's still rolling, looks like. Gotta look at that camera every once in a while. Sometimes that GoPro, again, it'll be locked up on you. The screen will just be on, the timer's not going. You can't turn it off. You have to pop the battery out. And again, it's a coin flip whether or not you're gonna get your footage. So. One of these days, there'll be an action camera come out that's worth a damn. This fish said he wasn't waiting on it, buddy. He's going to bite that jig right now. And my reel says it ain't waiting around either. It's just going to keep letting that drag slip. Man, this is fun, y'all. If you ain't got an ultralight rod, put it on your Christmas list. Get you an ultralight rod and some gulp minnows and some small jig heads and get ready to catch a bunch of fish. Go out to your local pond or reservoir or lake, river, and just throw. Cast them jigs, man. You'll catch a bunch of bluegill. That's all I've caught out here in the last 30 something minutes. But I don't know how many I've caught now. It's just been one after another probably haven't had a stretch of more than five casts without a fish. And we've all kind of, I ain't moved hardly. I, we was casting on that tree, and now we're just working this other one over here. As this boat goes by. I'd wave, but I got my hands full, buddy. This fish said he'd wave, but he ain't got no arms. He's gonna give him a little, as you see that though, he, he flapped his tail. That's a way that the bluegill can wave. That's a courteous bluegill. Let's make a few more casts here. Let me check my phone, see what time it's getting to be. I ain't gonna do this too much longer. I got, got what I need here just to get me some live baits. And, I don't know, I may be wasting my time out here catfishing, but these bluegill have made the trip worthwhile for me, even if I don't get a blue or a catfish tonight. I could just about do this right here seven days a week and be happy. You know, a lot of these, I'm gonna have to change that gulp out there too. I think this is just gulp number, th all these fish I've caught, we only own gulp number three here. That's pretty good. But the nice thing 
about ultralight fishing. I've touched on this before, but you know, when you let me get that lid back on there, right? These things don't leak, but if you got the lid on crooked, by gosh, they will then. But when you when you do in other types of fish, and you're like, well, I'm catfishing, for instance. There are some days I go out or I'm looking for action, you know, and I want to get a bunch of bites and stuff. But most of the time when I go catfishing, I'm I'm at least hoping to get some big fish, you know, some, some trophy fish, some quality fish, something that's going to, when I pull on it, it's going to pull back. And, you know, certain bodies of water have trophy fish but a lot of them out there a lot of you watching depending on what state you live in or what body of water is easiest for you to get to you may not have a population of trophy catfish or trophy bass or stripers or you know whatever it is that you're hoping to get you know as far as a trophy fish species goes but when it comes to ultralight fishing you don't need a big trophy fish. Uh, you know, a six inch bluegill are a blast on an ultralight setup. They put a big bend in the rod, they fight like the Dickens, you know, a small reel, two pound line, they're gonna pull some drag for you. You know, it's just, it's fun. You don't need big fish. And most bodies of water out there, if you've got bluegill or I think up north, you got like perch and stuff like that you can have a blast on an ultralight setup and it doesn't matter that you may not be catching a trophy sized fish you can still go out and have a dang good time and you can avoid one of the things that I love about ultralight fishing and it's one of the things that I really love I've you know been super into the carp fishing this year one of the things I love about it is I can get back in these creeks and these coves, you know, a long ways away from people. When I'm catfishing, I'm oftentimes out on the main channel. I'm fishing the main main river channel, and between the other fishermen, the bass boats, the wakeboarders, the house boarders, jet skis, people just annoy the hell out of you. But when you ultralight fishing, you can hide from people. You can you can get back in these creeks and and these backwater areas and just avoid people but not but not have to avoid the fish you know you can you can get on some bites way back in the middle of nowhere you may not get any trophy catfish back there you may not get any trophy stripers or any huge largemouth bass necessarily but you can find some fish to give you a, a, a good bend in this ultralight rod and that's one of the things that I love most about it. This and the carp fishing is just my chance to oftentimes just get away from people. I'm going to move back up here. This first tree that we got on, it's been a few minutes. Let's just slide on up and make a few more casts of it. And then I'm going to head across the channel over here and see if I can't get me a catfish tonight. Just spot lock right here again. This would be a lot easier if the daggone leaves wasn't on the water. But it sure makes a pretty sight. This year, we've had a lot of just beautiful colors on our leaves. I think maybe because it's been so dry. I really, I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not, but it has been a very dry fall for us. And the leaves have seemed to be extra pretty this year. Oh, I got hit. A little taparoo there, a little tap, tap, tap it in, Happy Gilmore. Drag has slipped again. I gotta. Y'all, if you ain't got an ultralight rod, put you an ultralight rod on your Christmas list. I'm gonna put me a reel on my Christmas list. That's what I'm gonna get me. 
Bluegill, when Santa Claus come to see you? He delivers he delivers to us humans. Are you all on a different schedule? That fish said Santa Claus never come see him. He ain't never been. He said he wasn't a good little boy. He said his parents told him to eat his vegetables. And instead, he's out sneaking around eating gulp minnows with hooks in them. These fish, man, they, they can't resist a gulp. I don't know how many I've caught here and uh, however long I've been doing this, but it's been a bunch. These trees have been stacked, man. Oh, no. Daggummit. I got down to one of them branches in. We'll see if I can get this thing back. This, this tree's been good to me here. I ain't been snagged in it much, but it got me then. Let's see what I can do. I see that thing on that branch right there. This water's really clear. There we go. Well, I got my jig, but I have come right over the top of where I was fishing. I probably done spooked every one of them now. All right, well, I'll tell you what, folks. Let me spot lock here again. Uh, I'm gonna, again, my plan coming out here tonight, do a little ultralight fishing, get my fix, get me some live baits, and then do some catfishing. That was my plan, so I think I'm gonna, we're at a good stopping point here, especially now that I've done spooked all these fish over here on this tree. And so I think I'm gonna go get set up to do some catfishing. So since I ended up just letting this camera run, we got a 46 minute video and counting here, I'll just call this a video and we'll just post this and then assuming I catch some catfish again, probably 25, 30% chance that that's gonna happen. But if I do, again, it's gonna be a big one. Um, if I have some success, you all will see that in an upcoming video. So uh, anyway, that's the plan. But for those of you who have missed my videos, thanks. Thanks for missing me. Again, I mentioned it in that little vlog update video I posted there. Warms my heart that so many people have reached out and missed me and, and, and have wondered when some more content was coming. So thanks. Thanks for sticking with me. Even through some, for some reason in the fall and winter months, my video views just declined. But there is a hardcore group of people that watch every video I put out and I appreciate the hell out of you. So if you're one of those people who watch all the videos, and especially if you're one of these people who watches all the way to the end, hey, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I truly do appreciate you. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap up this video, go get set up to catch some catfish. Y'all wish me luck. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.